Will we need 3D glasses for this session? Yes, so not all the time, but I will let you know. Okay, and if you want to know what type of 3D glasses, red on your left eye and greeny cyan colored on your right eye. Okay, over to you, Bjorn. Let's get going. Great, thanks a lot, Nick. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot for having me again. Um, today, I want to talk about hybrid stereoscopic photography. So it's, it started as a hobby project. I will say a few words later about this. So two vintage analog cameras meet the digital age. Let's, let's see what happens there with them. So um, based on at the RCA, uh, a number of you might know this already. So I just uh, show the slide here to show that we have a number of virtual reality related projects here. Um, a number of them I discussed in my previous talk, but this is not the topic now. The topic is now I would like to talk about uh, the <clears throat> lockdown period. So basically all of us were in lockdown and I think many of us started to look at the hobbies which we did uh, a couple of years ago. So it, it was urgently required because many of us were 10 or 12 hours in front of the screen and uh, it was not really the case that the work is getting less. I think all of us share the same experience. But uh, on the other hand, you are at home all the time and you also need to get out from time to time if it's uh, actually allowed. So I was in quarantine in Constance because we cannot visit the college anymore in London uh, and started to work with my photos. So first I started to do this with smartphones. Like all of us, I do a lot of photos with my smartphone, but I'm not satisfied with it for a couple of reasons. So this is the Samsung smartphone, which I used for a long time, S7. I really liked it a lot. I mean, it has already quite, it makes quite good images, but you have still a relatively low resolution. Then you have JPEG compression, which is basically destroying the images. Black box algorithm are optimizing the images, low quality optics, obviously. And of course, it's also very easy to use it, so everybody can do it. And I'm looking, uh, I'm just remind myself on the time where I took five minutes when I was young to make an image so that you have the optimal image compo composition. So not all of this is true anymore. So nowadays, so we bought this awesome Huawei P30 Pro. It's really an awesome phone, I have to confess. So you cannot argue anymore that it has, it has a low resolution. Um, it's had also kind of JPEG compression anymore. So you can even save it in a raw format. And I think you have a resolution up to 40 megapixels, but yeah, so not all the algorithms are working then anymore. But still, you have a lot of black box algorithms going on in the background. You might remind yourself on your old camera, which had probably a better style when it was taking the photos, had another way of using the colors. And still the optics, so you can dramatically zoom in, but the optics are yeah, relying on digital zoom. It's, it's probably not what you want if you want to make high quality photos. So of course, you can buy now for a couple of thousand euros, you can buy um, an expensive digital camera, but I basically looked what, what is in my flat. So I found my old camera again. So, and why should we still use uh, analog photography nowadays? So if you look to the process, it's kind of a contemplation. It's kind of precision because, because you cannot make 100 photos to have a single, from a single perspective. You need also some kind of skills normally. So know a little bit about Apache and so on. Then from design, of course, it, uh, it comes with high quality optics. So the haptic experience is completely different from just using a smartphone. Then there's the real sound, um, which it makes when the mechanics are taking place. And on the other hand, it's, it's kind of a sustainability project because you basically reuse this uh, vintage material yeah, in a way. Um, of course, you can argue it's not completely sustainability because yeah, on the other hand, you need chemicals um, to get the images in place. So let's have a look at my analog gear. So I had, of course, only a single camera from the old days, which was lying, there was some dust on top of it. So nobody was using it for ages. So it was a very nice Minolta Dynex 7000i, which is a quite nice camera and uh, was quite popular at this time. So what I, what I, I looked at eBay and I found out, okay, it's, it's very cheap to buy these devices. So, and I also don't want to convince you to buy this camera. Look maybe in your own, Flat, what, what do you have there? And um, probably you just uh, just for a very small amount of money, you can you can buy a second one. So, and what you need, of course, in addition is you need a IR receiver and a transmitter so that you can synchronize both cameras, which works actually quite good. And on the other hand, you need a tripod. And I used, I had two approaches. So I used two tripods or one tripod and combined it with this newer dual flash bracket, which you can also use. 
to um, it looks like this here, which you can basically use to um, add your cameras to it. That you can see it, it fits very nice everything into a package. And I use here this Minolta A autofocus 35 to 105 millimeters. Of course, um, keep in mind also argue this is a camera which met already kind of the digital age. So because it also has some digital functions. So if you don't like this into your complete purest piece, please buy a completely not non-digital camera. So um but now I have the cameras in place, and as I have some computer science background, I was thinking about how can I actually develop an app which could be useful to get a stereoscopic effect. And I was reminding myself of my first paper, which I published at this conference, which was about you could basically change. Uh, so it was about a software, which um, the, the Microcosmos Cell Explorer, and you could change the distance between the eyes if you are moving into a cell environment. Because in this way, also, you could look at microstructures. You have, if you're interested in this, a reference is giving there. So you could look into microstructures and optimize the 3D effect. So the important thing here is then that if you look to the right image, that you have to look where's the projection aim, the, the, the projection um, frame, where actually both eyes meet, so where they, they are focusing at. And the problem is also, if you make photos, that everything which is between the near plane and the projection plane is maybe basically um, yeah, um, intersecting with a with a stereoscopic frame, and in this way, you will have some distortion in your image. So it's it's quite important that um, your main image uh, or your main object of interest is at the projection plane, and um, objects which are uh, larger are between the far plane and the projection plane. So um, here you can actually start now to use your glasses because I want to pretend to be more professional. I use this once. So. Um, so everybody of you knows the Stereoid app, I think. If you don't know it, please download it. It's, uh, I think there's a free version and you can, for a very small amount of money, you can buy it. So it's a very nice device, a very nice app, which you can use with your Android phone to just make two photos. So, and here you can see an outcome of these photos. Uh, of course, you can, the problem is you cannot synchronize it, of course. So if you make an image and uh, something is happening in front of the image, other that you just have a building it will basically not work. So this here, I just made this image here so that you can see and get an idea how it works. So the next thing I would like to show you, I, I got the idea, I was wo um, working a little bit with, with different Compass apps and was thinking, can I not utilize this one to um, align my cameras in the context of my uh, stereo uh, functionality, which I need. So in here, you see a number of, of apps, which I use, some are good, some are not so good. And here you just have an overview of the apps I was looking into. And in addition, what I wanted to do is I want to find out what is the distance between the object which I'm taking the photo from. So I, I downloaded this Maps Measure app, which you see on the left side. And on the other hand, you have this calibration app on the right side. I did not implement a calibration at the moment. But yeah, so, so there is a basic calibration functionality also, functionality also coming with um, software. So these are the, the apps which I took into account. And this is the app which I developed based on another app, which I want to show you shortly here. So that's the original app, it's called the Material Compass. And you see, um, it is a very basic app, but it was open source. It, was all, it came with the MIT license, so you can freely um, extend it. You can even just install it right now, but it's, it's a very simple app compared to the other apps which I showed before. So on the right side, you can see the basic functionality. So you just have um, yeah, the, 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 the compass, um, you, get, you get the longitude and latitude shown, and you, you see basically the degree there in, um, shown. So, and what I did now <clears throat> do is I uh, created an app based on this, which you can see now on the right side, you see a little bit familiarity with that. So on one hand, you can see that you have the different options, so you can, Define the eye camera lens distance so that you can basically compute the different angle values which you need. So then you can define the focus object distance and you can do this actually manually just by typing it into it. Or you can use um, a Google map which is directly connected to the app. So it's integrated here. So what you can see here on the left side is that you can draw a line, then you get the distance here. So here the distance is four meters. And then you can directly transfer this into the app and can, you can use it to compute the angle. And then you have 
um, the center angle shows the, the angle you are locking. So it would be the location between your two cameras. And then you can use it to um, move your camera to the left, um, move it accordingly to, to the degrees and to the right and do the same thing um, uh, for the, the right one. And an indicator would show if you actually uh, use the angle which you need then. So the relative angle to the angle which you see, which uh, here would be 162. 0.03. What is also coming with this? So you have the stereo alignment by using these angles. You can lock the center location and you can measure the left right alignment for the camera. And the other um, features which uh, I implemented here was a magnetic field uh, measurement because I got this idea from some of the other apps I was using. And it was quite important because when you um, use your smartphone towards your camera, often you will get some interference. Um, and then obviously the, the compass will not work anymore. So, and so you have to get the right spot. And by using this magnetic field, you can see where you are not interfering with the, with the camera better, the battery and the other electronic components. So, and basically you put it then, <clears throat> if you have the camera here, um, like this, you will put it here on the, on the back of that and use it then to measure the whole thing. Okay. And if you're interested in this, please uh, join my demo session. Um, I will give you a link later on if you want to register to it so I can show you how the, the whole thing works. I want to come to the fun part. So please use your glasses again. So this here was more or less one of my first images which I did. And this is actually an image which I did with um, two tripods. Um, so this here is the island of Maino, which is it's a lake of Constance. So it's a very nice island, which is quite popular here um, and has many visitors every day. Uh, you can also see that the resolution is here not so great because I used old film material, so it was not quite new, but it was also very foggy at this day. So this is how it worked. So on the right side, you can see how the settings were. So you can actually not only use it to do the measurement, you can also use the whole thing to document what you were actually doing. So you have the location where you have been, and plus you have the information, what was the stereo, um, the stereo resolution there and what was in addition, what was the angle which you use for, for this measurement. So this is the next one. Again, you can see here in the front is a tree and silent of minor is in the back. Yes, again, how I did the photo. So you can see how I was using just the two tripods. You can see how you can basically type in the different values. Um, and how you can change the uh, intended angles. So you can see, for example, that the focus distance was four meters. Um, at this time, I did not have the app um, implemented, so I had to measure it by eye more or less. These times are over now. And then you can see that the distance between both eyes is giving us 215 centimeters, which basically means that this is the distance which you have between both cameras. So this here is a... Uh, um, castle of Meersburg, which you can see here. And actually we had three days ago, a lot of snow. So this is a brand new image. So um, this was taken, I, I think Friday, Friday, I think it was, was taken. Um, and uh, we actually had half a meter snow, which uh, last, uh, so people living here told us that this was happened the last time 15 years ago. So here you can see the setup again. And this time you can see that I use this um, small, um, set up here where I can combine two uh, cameras on one device. And of course, the whole setup is then much more easy than using two tripods. But it might be important. So when the object is far away, then the idea is that you can use two tripods to get a nice stereo effect afterwards. So here you can see how the measurement was done again. And the distance was then transferred to the app. That's, I think, is the final image. So this is in Constance. So the, uh, there's a small cathedral in Constance. And this is an image which was taken there. Again, with this, um, I only used one tripod for this purpose. So you can see that the stereo effect is quite nice. And here you can see again, the, the location of um, where I made the photo and the distance which was measured. And of course, um, I have to confess that I mostly use this now for documentation because when you just use um, this set up here with, with the two, um, if you just set them side by side, you can very easily just um, 
use the indicator in the center of the camera to to find the, the spot in the center. But um, what you actually don't have then anymore is then the angle afterwards. So this is also something which you can do uh, very nicely with the app. So that's uh, the final image is also a piece of art which is located in uh, Meersburg. So this is called um, the, mag uh, the Magic Column or the Magic Pillar, which is a very nice artwork from Lenke here, who's a famous artist here in this area. <clears throat> Again, you can see here the indicator which was used for this purpose. And here you can see how I made this, uh, the Red Suan versions of the images. So I used my uh, Sony uh, stereoscopic laptop for this purpose, which is already a couple of years old. And I used a stereoscopic player. I think everybody who is using stereoscopic images knows this player. And I use this image to convert the side-by-side -side images to uh, Red Suan Anaglyphs, which works quite, guys, quite nicely. So, so the conclusion. So we created an app, which you can basically use to pre-compute a stereoscopic effect and align your cameras in this purpose. It uh, can be used, of course, also for digital cameras at uh, which you like. It comes with a, uh, with a couple of features. If you want to see the setup, you can also join me as a demo session. So, so please um, use a form to sign up for this demo session. And uh, also, yes, a, a link given where we soon will just put the, map online, uh, the app online and you can find more information about this app. That's the acknowledgement section. This is actually an image which I have taken completely without the app because I had to be very fast in this way. And uh, I just want to thank the Photo Münster Konstanz, where, which basically supported me to make the photos uh, also on very short notice, and RKI Fund for financing um, here my talk today. And with this, I thank for your attention and take your questions. Thank you.